morning, Kids Church friends. I'm glad to see you today. I'm sorry that we are not together on Zoom this morning. We're gonna start probably doing more Sunday School videos in the next couple of months instead of Zoom Sunday School. So I hope that you'll take some time each week to watch these videos, and then hopefully we'll be able to have some time to be on Zoom again um, in the near future. Okay, so for today's lesson, I want you to make sure that you've got some supplies for a craft that we're gonna do in just a little bit. So if you wanna pause the video and get your supplies together, that would be great. You're gonna need some paper, you're gonna want some markers, um, you're gonna need some scissors, and then a stapler or tape. So pause the video and go get your supplies so that you're ready for the lesson. All right, okay, so for today's lesson, we are going to be in the book of John and we're gonna be um, hearing uh, what Jesus was praying before um, he went to the cross. So before we do that, um, I want to ask you guys, have y'all ever had to learn how to do something new? Maybe um, you had to learn how to ride a bike or you needed to learn um, how to use scissors. Now, when I was a kid, I loved learning how things worked or learning how to fix things. Sometimes the best way to learn how to do something is to have somebody show you how to do it. So a lot of times my daddy would sit with me and he would show me how to fix things or how to take things apart so that we could look at it. And sometimes I needed him to show me and I also needed a tool to be able to do it. So for example, do you see this handy dandy tool right here? You probably have one of these at your house and maybe you've used one before. This is a Phillips head screwdriver. And this Phillips head screwdriver lives in my kitchen. One of the things my daddy taught me how to do was to tighten a doorknob when a doorknob gets loose. So oftentimes in our house, because we've got a bunch of kids coming in and out of the house, the doorknobs will get loose and I'll need to tighten it. So now I know how to do it because my daddy taught me and I've got my tool ready to do it. All right, so today the Bible story that we're gonna read, Jesus is teaching us how to pray. He shows us how to pray. Doesn't just tell us, he gives us a really good example. And he also teaches us that prayer is a really good tool to talk to God. So I'm going to read our Bible story for you. It's from John 17, it's verses 9 through 22. Oh, and before we do that, I forgot we have to get ready to listen. So you guys know how we do this. Is everybody ready? All right, arms up in the air, stretch out. Big stretch. Oh, okay, big stretch out. Good work. All right, get your ears, ears awake. Gotta wiggle those ears and wake them up. Get your brain. Say, wake up, brain, wake up, brain. Okay, all right, you ready? All right, I'm ready to listen. Are you ready to listen? All right, here's what Jesus says. I have revealed your name to the people you gave me from the world. They were yours. You gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given is from you because I have given them the words you gave me. They have received them and have known for certain that I came from you they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you have given me because they are yours. Everything I have is yours and everything you have is mine and I am glorified in them. I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I was protecting them by your name that you have given me. I guarded them and not one of them is lost except the son of destruction so that the scripture may be fulfilled. Now I am coming to you and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy completed in them. I've given them your word. The world hated them because they are not of the world just as I am not of the world. I'm not praying that you take them out of the world but that you protect them. They're not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. I sanctify myself for them so that they also may be sanctified by the truth. Wow. Okay, so in this prayer, Jesus was talking to God, and he was praying for his disciples, his friends, right? And also at the end, I don't know if you heard this, but he prayed for us. He prayed for all believers. Can you believe that Jesus, the Son of God, prayed for us? 
the person that we're supposed to be praying to prayed to God for us. That really means a lot to me. So this is a great example for us to remember that prayer is a great tool for us to be with God and to talk to God and also to remember that Jesus prays for us even when we don't have the words to pray. So today we are going to practice praying. I've got a craft for us to do. We are going to work on a prayer chain. And then after our prayer chain, I'm going to teach you a different way to pray. All right, we're going to show you guys how to make a prayer chain. So get whatever kind of paper you have at your house. We cut up uh, just some plain old construction paper into strips. You could use computer paper if that's what you have, if you have fancy scrapbook paper, or even just a notebook paper out of a journal or something that you can tear off. We're gonna take each strip of paper and we're gonna write prayers on it. So these could be, oh yeah, markers. You definitely yes, need some yes, markers, some good big fat markers to write with or to, to draw with if you don't know how to write the prayer. So these could be help us prayers, like God help me with my test this week, or help my friend get better from being sick or um, help my friend who's getting ready to move. It could be a thank you prayer. God, thank you for my family. Thank you for the beautiful weather, or for the pretty flowers. Um, anything that you want to pray for this week, you're going to write your prayers on your strips of paper, and then we're going to show you how to make the chain. So we're going to do super speed on our uh, prayer chain. And so if you want, you could pause the video here while you cut your strips and write your prayers. And then when you're ready to go, then hit play. All right? You guys ready? Yeah. Let's go. All right. I'm going to show you now how to make your prayer chain. And this part you may need a parent to help you with. Mm -hmm. So... Um, you could save this part of your craft to do with your parents after church when they are ready to help you. But you're going to, we're going to use a stapler, but you could also use tape if you have just some scotch tape or some mask tape. You could try using glue. That might be a little trickier because you have to hold it for a long time. So I would suggest if you can use a stapler or tape, but you're right. In a pinch, you could try some glue. All right, so I'm going to take my first, my first prayer. I'm going to make it into a circle and staple it all right just like that and now i'm going to keep getting the rest of my prayers and i'm going to add them so that it's on the outside so that i can read my prayers on the chain okay it's going to make a long long chain it's going to make a long long chain and then you can kind of skip it around to the other So we've started our prayer chain. We're gonna keep adding our prayers to the prayer chain. And then what I want you to do when your prayer chain is finished, I want you to find it somewhere that you can hang it in your house this week. Maybe next to your bed or next to your bathroom mirror. Uh, maybe we'll put it up on the wall here by our table so that you can see it all week long. And whenever you walk by it or you wake up in the morning, you could stop for a minute and you could look at your chains and you could pray for all the things on your chain. All right, thanks for helping guys. All right, friends, check out the Evans family prayer chain. It just kept growing and growing and growing. Can you believe all of these things that we have to pray for this week? So we're going to hang this up somewhere in our house where we can see it and be reminded, and I hope that you will do the same. All right, so we have got one more type of prayer that we're going to learn about now, and this type of prayer is called the centering prayer. And the centering prayer is a prayer that has been around for hundreds of years that people have been doing. This prayer teaches us to listen to God. We do a lot of talking when we pray, don't we? So if you'll remember in the Bible story that we read today, Jesus actually prayed for his disciples and prayed for us today. And so it is good for us to, uh, to be with God, just to be with him, to practice listening, and to give space for God to pray for us. So I'm going to read a story to you guys that teaches us about the centering prayer and how to do it. And then at the end of the story, we are going to practice. We are off to take a journey to the center of ourselves. Where are we going? Is it far? Here. It's right here in the deepest part of your heart. In every heart, there is God's kingdom. Your soul is the home of God inside you, a holy place to pray each and every day. 
And though you cannot see your soul, you know it's there, just like the air. So when you close your eyes and open your heart, you need not go very far. Your soul is who you are. Yes, who I am as a child of God. I am made in God's image, and I'm like Jesus, too. And a part of me is filled with the Holy Spirit. It's true. Why would you want to go there, to the deepest part of your heart? Because this journey is a very special time when God prays within you, in that secret place in the soul where Jesus lives and loves. So now, how do I get to that place in my heart? Is it a long journey? When can we start? No, it won't take you long, only a few minutes, really. But first, you will need a special, secret, sacred word. A holy word that is a key. A secret way to knock, a sacred key to unlock the center of your heart. You can choose your own word, a secret just between God and you. Here are some special words to pick and choose from. Creator, Faith, Father, Hope, Savior, Jesus, Heaven, Holy Spirit, God, Love. You may find another word in your Bible, but remember, keep it safe and secret in your heart and mind, even though you may change it from time to time. Your key will always work, will open every lock and door when it is spoken from the heart. We know that for sure. Do you have it? Your word, I mean? Okay, now repeat your sacred word like a whisper in the heart, and only by God is it heard. Next, let me tell you the steps to take on this short journey inside. The steps are the same for everyone. Let us pray. Let us rest within, with God the Father and the Son. In a very special way, silently we say, Welcome, Holy Spirit. Pray with us and in us today. Step one, choose your secret, sacred word. Step two, place your chairs in a circle if others join you to pray. If you're praying all by yourself, that's okay. Parents or adults may light a candle just for as long as they stay. Step three, be still, be silent, eyes closed, closed door, feet on the floor, lips sealed, straight on the seat. Step four, Silently say your secret word in your heart. Rest within. Sit and wait. God is there inside you. In the quiet. Rest within. Step five. When you find yourself thinking of something else, that's okay. Just say the secret word again, silently and slowly in your heart. Then let those other thoughts float right out of your head. Step six, six minutes of silence. A journey to the center of you with God. That's the time the journey will take you. Step seven, six minutes later, you may open your eyes and say out loud the Our Father prayer. Do you know it? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In your heart and soul, God speaks in silence where words cannot be found out loud. But know and trust that God will hear you, even when you don't speak a word. His ear is right next to your heart. There may be a lot of noise outside. A barking dog, a singing bird, a buzzing bee, a croaking frog. Your friends might sneeze or cough, hiccup, maybe even burp. You may hear fire engines, police sirens, airplanes, and helicopters, playtime, laughing, yelling, and cheering. There are also noises inside of you. The thoughts of toys, TV shows, and movies, 
games and sports to play with friends and family, chocolate cake, ice cream, candy, and other good things. It's all right. They're all okay. No matter what or who you hear or think about inside and out, just repeat your word gently, softly, quietly after each thought. It will be heard in your heart by God. Let your thoughts go. Forget them all. Let them float right out of your head. Knock, knock, knock. Secret, sacred word. Here I am, God. I want to spend time with you. Come pray within my heart. God whispers back in your heart, I love you. So when can you pray? Every day that the sun rises, shines, and sets, when stars sparkle and twinkle and the moon glows, you can pray in spring, summer, fall, and winter as the seasons come and go. Wake up, my child. Time to begin a new day. Please wash, dress, have some breakfast. Then, time to pray. Six minutes of silence in quiet sitting, opening your heart to God today. Then, when the day is almost over, some time before you go to bed, pray once more to make it twice. Six minutes more this time of prayer before you sleep. Rest within your heart and soul with God, your friend who loves you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. <laughs> 